I'm here with Dr. Shupak. We've got the trifecta up on the far left, the T1 contrast in the middle, the flare or fluid attenuated inversion recovery image, and on the right, the T2 spin echo image in a 56-year-old woman with a headache and a droopy eye. I'm going to scroll while you start to elaborate on the finding of importance. Okay. Well, you know, a droopy eye, that's kind of a serious problem, right? Meaning if you go to your doctor with a, a droopy eye that's not working and they tell you that you're tired or depressed, you need another doctor, right? I mean, this is a situation where something's going on and we got to come up with something, okay? So your droopy eye differential, you got to sort of have one in your mind. Okay, one thing would be, could it be a third nerve palsy? And that's a serious problem, sure. right? Could be an aneurysm, something sure. of that sort. Sure, and we would go okay. to the third nerve area here and look around, and we don't right. see much there. That's right. So that's one thing you've got to look for. Now, other question is, which eye, which side, okay? Because sometimes what will happen is one, the one pupil will be small and the other big, and that will be mistaken for it. So you've got to really kind of look at your sides here and how it's described. It's a left droopy eye. Cause, yes, because an unsophisticated observer might describe it as a dilated pupil, but actually the action's on the other side. Like me. Okay. Like me. So now we're talking about a droopy eye. In this case, there's a headache, right? So in this case, so the other thing in your differential is how about Horner's syndrome? Do you guys remember that? Ptosis, meiosis, anhydrosis, you remember. I remember that, yeah. I, I told you that, but didn't you forgot? Now I you forgot. remember again. I'm an so old internist. So the place to look right now is we've looked at the third nerve, looking for an aneurysm, so that's a biggie. We did look we for the third We don't see it. Nerve. We didn't see an aneurysm. Next thing, keep on heading down because the next stop the is next the carotid canal. All right, let's check out the carotid canal. Here's and we have place. action there. We okay. do have action right okay. there. So you can see that, that in the carotid canal, there's sort of a meniscal appearance around the carotid, okay? And so carotid dissection as a cause of Horner's syndrome, ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis, okay? Classic, all right? Kind of easy to miss if you're not thinking about it, but if you see droopy eye on a history, that's one of the two or three things that you're gonna, ha that you're gonna have to come up with. And so you just you cannot miss this if you're on urgent care or ER call. Absolutely. This is one of the basic basics. I don't care if you're a general rad, if you're a neuro rad, if you're a fellow, if you're a resident. It's terrible if you miss this finding because it, it is treatable and it can have drastic consequences like a stroke. It does have this kind of arcuate, meniscoid look to it. I've blown it up so our audience can see it a little better. And you can see the opposite carotid. And then if I go up, and we, we talked about earlier in our introduction, what's real, what's important, what's not important. Well, yes, there are some high signal areas in the pons, but people with hypertension as they age get those. These are areas of gliosis. They're completely unrelated to the patient's problem. They can throw you totally off the track. And Dr. Shupek, being a neurosurgeon and being a neuroimager, has honed right in on the area of interest, which you can follow longitudinally up and down. It goes right into the petrous portion of the left carotid artery, and this is a left carotid artery dissection. You better not miss it.